previously on Titan's Grave, the Ashes of Volcana. The party finally claimed the Staff of Forlorn Hope, only to discover how aptly it was named. There is a flash, and you are no longer in the room. <gasps> Each of our heroes experienced a distinctly painful vision, illuminating pieces of their past they would have rather left in the dark. Upon their return to Nestora, Chairman Voss delivered a chilling truth. While the world needed to believe that the Prophet had been destroyed, the Prophet was too powerful to fully destroy. He called upon them to take up the mantle of their ancestors, complete their work, and vanquish the ancient evil. For you are descended from the great heroes who originally imprisoned the Prophet. Now, staff in hand, the blood of heroes in their veins, they must continue their adventure and find the Tomb of the Prophet before it's too late. Eons before Valkana heard her own name, she bore witness to beings not of this realm. These ancients planted the seeds of life on Valkana. And as that life grew, and civilizations formed, the thirst for supremacy blossomed into war. Gifted with an unmatched intellect, the Saurian Empire built mighty war machines and claimed dominion on Valkana, until the heavens themselves fell upon them. Valkana was plunged into darkness and a thousand years of war. In this crucible, great heroes were forged, and together, they extinguished the flames of battle. A new civilization was built on the ruins of the old, a peaceful world of magic and science. But the forces of chaos are patient, and not easily contained. Left to fester, ancient evils threaten to emerge and unleash mayhem upon the world. And so, to face them, new heroes must arise from the ashes of Valkana. So, you look at this map where the crystal has landed, and it is, uh, uh, appears to be at a place called Moon Perch. And Voss chuckles, and he says, Of course he would want to go home. Reed Manor must have been constructed at Moon Birch. It will be a long journey. You must prepare. All right, shopping. <laughs> shopping With our montage. 100 gold. Shopping montage. Da, 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 da. All right, I bought a bunch of pot, uh, potions. I really sounded like you said I, brought a, I bought a bunch of pot, is what I that sounded like. As it turns Actually, out, the road to Moon Perch is along the same tour schedule as fish, so. Oh, oh, convenient. Uh, Their trampoline Rich. show is amazing. Yeah. Um, I got myself a blaster sweeper, which is like a shotgun but made of blaster. I got myself some new underpants. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get it, sure. Um, <laughs> as you get ready to leave the Voss group, you realize that your skills have increased. Your what? focuses what? have focused. Your talents have talented. You've gained a level. So when we were up there looking at all those different sorts of cyborg parts, it really made me want to like think about upgrading the stuff that I have so that I can take on stronger foes. There's also a power shot uh, uh, thing that you can do to. to um, ooh, like add like like energizing things to it so yeah. it's like electrocuting or something yeah, when yeah. it attacks? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure all that out in game terms, but yeah, for, for, for narrative purposes, yes. All right. yes. Doc, with Doctor, energy. Dr. Lobotomy has been uh, promoted. <laughs> Chief Surgeon of Lobotomy. Yeah. yeah. So Voss outfits you with some uh, horses. Uh, one of them uh, looking kind of like Upla the Mox horse from Thunder the yes. Barbarian because it pleases me, your game master. <laughs> and a few nights into your journey, you all make a camp, uh, and you are out uh, of, in the plains, and you are amongst the stars, and as you settle in to, to have your, your evening meal, would you like to talk about any recent events? Would you like to talk about them amongst yourselves? We would... Um... We noticed something we in that about? last fight. And how cool I was? You don't yeah, it was pretty cool. Totally how cool you were. We just want you to know that you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. But you but also don't have to hide it. From us. 
because there's nothing that you could do or be that we wouldn't. You're the most badass out of yeah. all of us. Thanks. But are you okay? Lemley starts crying. Um, but she totally says every, everything's totally fine. Like that, that, I don't even know what you guys are even talking about. It's not even a big deal. So what, I got some like wires. It's no big deal. It is no big deal. Right, I know. So Lemley's looking to Ankia for something. What does Ankia do? None of us are whole. But that doesn't mean that we are empty. So I was thinking about it. We all had our flashbacks, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so I saw my adopted parents, who I thought like had found me and they were really cool, they actually stole me. Did you know that? What? I didn't know yeah. That. So when I accidentally killed him, it's a good thing. <laughs> I thought I was about to see my dwarf dad, but when he turned around, he had no face and it was super spooky. Your real dad didn't have a face. <laughs> Didn't your intelligence level go up by um, one? Right. <laughs> it totally did. <laughs> All I got to do with that staff was watch my father get hit by a car through his own eyes. Staff sucks. That staff sucks. I think it just showed us pivotal points in our... So wait, what did it show you? When I was locked in that church studying magic, surrounded by darkness. So it must have been hard to see in your flashback. <laughs> exactly right. So Sleth sort of, I think, retreats a little bit outside of the firelight and sits just sort of at the edge. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that Ankia curls and then uh, Lemley comes in and sort of like tucks in and sleeps with her. And you're little. So uh, you've managed to sort of like make a little, like sort of a little bit out of the packs that are on the horses. And the starlight above Valkana begins to become the brightest thing that you can see. And her dual moons slowly move across the sky. And you drift off to sleep thinking and remembering and what has transpired among you in these last few days and weeks. And when you awaken, um, you have chicken and waffles for breakfast. <gasps> yes! Who brought the chicken and waffles? They were dropped off in the night by your game master. <laughs> and, uh, chicken is actually <clears throat> taped to the waffle. <laughs> Several days later, you arrive at what you know to be Mount Moonperch. And you just see a mountain that kind of goes up and nothing that looks like it could be uh, a fabulous manor. What would you like to do? Can we see the top or is it? You can in fact see the top. Oh, I'll search the base of the mountain. Yeah, sure, go ahead. 13 <laughs> with two stun points. Okay, would anyone who has a, a good search ability like to assist? In this search? Jeremy will. Right, Jeremy's good at Ugh. that. 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, and then 19. Yeah, Jeremy. I pick up Jeremy, ah. uh -huh. <laughs> put him on my shoulder, yeah. and then we go around and right. check out this okay. area that we're near. So, um, Actually, I can't pick up Jeremy. Jeremy's almost as tall as me. <laughs> Jeremy and I hold hands <laughs> and walk around. <laughs> so as you go along, Jeremy's just sort of like popping his head back and forth, right? And he leans over to you and he goes, I once got busy at a Burr the King bathroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Classic Jeremy. <laughs> and um, th there's, a, there's a small patch where it looks like not a lot is growing. So with a little bit of uh, further investigation, uh, you manage to dig out a black something, roughly the size and shape of this table, as a matter of fact. And it's a big black thing. Um, and it's a coffin. Uh, and there are four spaces, kind of like set out along the the bottom of it. Is it for our amulets, our glyphs? Oh. Can I take my glyph off and stick it on there and see if it does anything? Okay. 
Make an intelligence test. Oh man. That's <laughs> <laughs> weird, isn't it? Uh, eight plus three is what? Eleven. Twelve? More stun points. points. Okay. So um, you take your amulet off and you sort of look. You, you look at it, and and you're like, you guys, and you push it against the thing, and it fits, but nothing happens. So we all have to do it at the same time. Let's make this work. <laughs> can I examine it more with my uh, historical lore? Yeah, sure you can. Ooh, seventeen. So you get down close to it, and you recognize that this stone doesn't match the geology of the area. And in fact, this stone looks to be roughly a thousand years old. Whoa. Um, and when you look closer, you see that these little pieces that are sort of underneath are similar to these glyphs that you have from that orb that you had retrieved so very long ago, which is a little suspicious and weird. But then written above that, it says, family above all else. We're family, guys. Here we are. Get, get your glyphs out. For a moment, nothing seems to happen. But the ground then shudders. And there is the distant sound of great machinery. And just behind this slab, you see the mountain itself begin to draw in, revealing a space in the face of the mountain. Can we take our yeah, can we amulets, get our amulets back? back? Because that's a nice health for me. Go ahead. Hello. <laughs> and the door begins to slowly close. Run! Run! So we we run into the door. This is oh, a bad no, idea. Now it's a bad idea. The pilot hat falls off, and right before the door slams shut, she, she reaches out and grabs the hat, hat. Indiana Jones style. Ding, ding. That's really cool. Make a dexterity test. <laughs> <test. laughs> yeah. We are keeping these amulets. Oh. Seven, eight. We'll get you another hat. <laughs> no, I need this hat. <laughs> eight. Do you lose your hat, or do you lose your amulet? I gotta lose the hat and <laughs> find you a new hat. <laughs> this door begins to close behind you, and at the back of this, what is not much more than an alcove, is a large black disc set in a, a semicircle of tall curved glass. Seems like a transporter or an elevator. Oh, or right. Yeah. Can we perception the room and see yeah. if there's anything cool in it? I'll check out. Um, 12 plus 7, na, 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 19, and 6, six stun points. points. Tell me everything about this <laughs> mother room. <laughs> the room is largely empty. There uh, are, there is a hat rack on the wall. Oh. It does not have any hats on it. <laughs> um, there is what appears to be a communication device. Go over to the communication, communication thing device. and push a button and say, hello, hello. I have an engineering focus. Yes. So I will go over to the, <laughs> the communication. You don't want me okay. to do that? <laughs> so let him push you the button and you can say hello. Attempt to, to make the thing function. Okay. Um, it is long beyond repair. Oh. Oh, you, just, you can push, push the, the button all you want. <laughs> Let's go over and take a look at the uh, disc. The, the disc. Before re we step on this disc, I run over to the hat rack and pull on all the different hooks to see if it opens any secret doors. So she runs across the room and she leaps up <laughs> and begins <laughs> jumping around and pulling on the different pieces of the hat rack. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Did you drink? Were you my... looking for invisible hats? <laughs> <laughs> and more yes. importantly, did you find and any? Kiliel oh. says yes, <laughs> and she comes and puts an invisible pilot's hat on. Oh. As she puts the invisible hat on your head, Kiliel says, "Of course, I'm putting the invisible hat on her. We're sisters." And how does how does that make Lemley feel? Really happy. Are your periods matched up right now? What's going on? <laughs> Feel so left out. I think I'm gonna go step into on this big black disc in the uh, Someone explain circular of uh, sorry and menstruation yeah, to I was me. Just thinking that. <laughs> just, Saurians have I'm just curious. How... Saurians lay eggs. <laughs> and? Which are then 
delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but we should have okay, asked. Okay, we all stand on the desk. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And uh, there is a pressure switch inside this glass area, uh, and it says manor. Manor? Mm -hmm. We got Guys, all right, you stand on the disc. And we push the button that says manor. You can hear what sounds like very old machinery kind of coming to life, and there is a gasp of air, and it begins to lift for a very, very long time. Whoa. It comes up out of the top, and you are in a glass, uh, like, antechamber. Like a Mac store. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, what you see in front of you is a splendid manor, or rather, what is left of a splendid manor. In better days, this was one of the true wonders of the world, which is sad, because the only people who ever knew of its location and existence were the very few people who lived and the Reeds. lived here, the Reed family. And what you are looking at is the manor constructed by Arnon Reed, who you all have heard about. The uh, home here atop uh, Moon Perch uh, was once a famous marvel of engineering, but until now, no one else has really set eyes on this. And you are the first to be here in a very, very long time. When the Chaos Wars ended and Reed disappeared, he is presumed to have gone and lived at this manor uh, with his family, uh, who are of course his wife, Liesel, and his six-year-old son, Hob. You are able to deduce that what appears to be the top of a mountain is in fact some type of technological and magical illusion and the top of this mountain where you are now is actually a large flat space that was somehow developed by someone, presumably Arnon Reed. That's pretty Eats. cool. Mm -hmm. um, this was very expensive to build. Couldn't you have spent all this money if you're such a fan of Volcana helping out people? Mr. Richie Pants Hero Man. Why don't well, we live I mean, here? He did we live here? sort of help. Sort of save the, the world. Yeah, more, so obviously we're, <laughs> we're getting there so, from here, so this is this serves more purpose. <laughs> <laughs> this is sort of a, a patio or or a, a, a small plaza in front of uh, this manor. Is it windy? There is no wind. Mm. We're at the top of a mountain. Yeah. Science. So what would you like to do? I step out of the box and I call for Doxy. <laughs> <laughs> Love Doxy. Doxy! You don't uh, notice anything, but you do see what appears to be a bit of movement up on a far balcony. <gasps> Doxy. Oh, maybe. Right, well, maybe, maybe should, there's maybe, like maybe, bad guys in Maybe we here. should go into the building. <clears throat> All right. You find yourself in a great entryway. And as you stand in here, you realize that this is not actually the entryway to the manor itself. This is sort of a, an entryway to the grounds of the manor. Oh, wow. It's, wow. It's so we weren't even inside. It, it's the... very opulent. Inside is a portrait. And the portrait depicts Arnon Reed, his wife, Liesel, and his son, Hob. And when you pass next to it, you see that the painting sort of comes to life. It's a digital portrait. And it is Reed, and he turns to his wife and his son, and he says, I am so proud of us. This glorious estate that we have created together will keep us safe till the end of our days. I may continue our work, and we may continue our family. I, I it, found it your it. hand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's connected to a um. dead body. So there's two ways that you can go. You can, if you like, head toward what appears to be some gardens, uh, or you can head in a different direction um, toward uh, uh, a, a series of small uh, buildings. I'm gonna go to the garden. Which direction is the dog? Noise. You saw it on one of the far high balconies, uh, sort of up in the manor somewhere. 
Um, go to the garden yeah, and the buildings and then the manor? You want to walk out and look at the gardens? Garden. Yep. Sure. It's quite overgrown. Uh, you can tell that at one point it was actually a rather ornate series of gardens. There are actually a large number of interesting and exotic birds. Alive, living birds. Yes. <laughs> Yes, alive. Is there any tape? Alive, <laughs> there is no tape. <laughs> but um, unlike your previous bird experience, these birds are in fact living birds. I would like to uh, search around to see if there's any wildflowers or things that I can use for potions, either healing or like poisons or things like that. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. 17. So, as actually, yes, there are uh, some flowers here. There is some bark. You're able to to, to collect enough things uh, to make. What do I make? Ding, ding, ding. Beer. <laughs> oh my gosh! Can you make beer? Four regular healing potions. I'll take that. That's cool. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With historical lore and uh, research. I would also like to look around and see if uh, there's anything that... Yeah, go ahead. 18. You notice that the birds that you're looking at are all presumed to be extinct. Oof. Ooh. Don't kill any birds, you guys. I'm not gonna. So you head up a set of stairs that end up connecting you to sort of a porch. This is where the main door to um, Reed Manor is. Oh, it's and, the main door. Uh, totally and um, and if you look closely, you can see that this door is electronically locked. Mm. Electronically locked with a keypad? There does not appear to be a locking mechanism or unlocking mechanism from where you are. You're welcome to make a search. You do? No, 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 19. Does you crouch down and look? I don't have to crouch down to look at and it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's right. As you get as up you on tiptoes. As you up stand as tall as you can, and you hear from a balcony above you a voice that says, Oi! Is it time to play a game? Doxy? Hob? Oh, yeah. So what you see... We're expecting a voice at all. What appears to be a little teddy bear. <gasps> the teddy bear! Oh, what was I'm terrified name? of this. This Maybe is not going to be cute. Maybe the teddy bear is Doxy. No, the teddy bear was Ricardo or something like that. The, <laughs> the teddy bear is very old. Its little fur skin is mostly worn off and kind of tattered. Um, and one of his little eyes kind of dangles out by a wire. Ooh. And he oh, says, my blaster is so out. And he says, I'm ever so lonely. Won't you play with me for just a little while? I say, hi, what's your name? My name's Runcible. Runcible, how do we how do we open this door? Yeah, can you let us in yeah, so we we'll can play? play with you if you oh, let us in. Opening doors, much fun, so fun. Nothing quite opens a door like a riddle. Ooh. Let's play a riddle game. Let's All right, play. a riddle game. Play a riddle game. I continue pointing my blaster at Runcible because mm -hmm. this is just it's like Never it's like if you well. saw like a terrifying lizard. <laughs> <laughs> like, like toy with its eyeball falling out. I don't think that this is cute at all. Okay. okay. He says, here is my riddle. A legless cripple who likes to run, waging war against the sun, never drawl, never dry, feast on earth, born in sky. What am I? And he does sort of a little dance. Say it one more time. <laughs> yeah, <it's a laughs> Can you repeat that? Possibly Runcible? two. Three. Can you repeat it in an American accent as well? <laughs> a legless cripple who likes to run. Who likes to run. Waging war against the sun. Never droll, never dry. Feast on earth, born in sky. Of course, your characters have abilities and knowledge that perhaps we don't you... have. My first instinct is the moon. Yeah, that was I was thinking some kind of celestial thing. Like a meteor. Or fire. 
What would we roll for? Intelligence? Constellation? Yeah. Uh, would empathy be at all helpful? Intelligence? Empathy would help you divine the intent of the little teddy bear guy. <gasps> oh, you can find out if he's evil or not. I'm gonna do a little empathy roll on this dude. And then I'd like to try to... 17. Pretty please. He just, he is lonely. Oh, uh -huh. he is so lonely and he re he wants to play and this is so much fun. Okay. And I would like to have uh, Sleth solve the riddle or try to solve the riddle. All right. 17 and five stun points. Look at us! Why can't you roll like this against guard bots? <laughs> <laughs> or really anything. Or really anything other than riddles. You I'm kick this know ass. Mm -hmm. that this riddle relates to something elemental. Elemental. Oh, so it could be so fire. It could be fire. Like this cripple to born to run, mm -hmm. waging war against the sun. Mm -hmm. Never draw, never dry. Yeah, yeah, it's water. Water, water? water runs. Water. Yeah. Yeah, water runs. So you call out, someone answer him. Runstable, is it water? Yes! Yay! You're Yay! ever so clever! <laughs> Come inside to play more games! Yay! The door spins, the locks disengage, and Runstable runs away. We're so smart! <laughs> and so, you are in a foyer. And as you walk through, you pass by just sort of like a ruined wall, and, and you hear the little padding of robot, uh, teddy bear uh, feet. robot teddy bear feet. And you come to another digital portrait. And this shows Reed with his son, Hob, hand in hand with Runcible. And Runcible is brand new and is adorable. And Reed is holding out Runcible. There's a small robotic dog sitting next to them. Foxy. And as you <clears throat> step close to the portrait, it flickers into life. And uh, you hear uh, Amon Reed say, I made him for you, son. I know how lonely you are up here. Now, you and Docs will always have someone to play with. His name is Runcible and he's programmed with all your favorite games. And Hob reaches over and hugs Runcible. And uh, you can see like little tears starting to form in his eyes as he squeezes his Runcible as tightly as he can. And the little robotic dog makes a little robotic bark and it begins to repeat itself. And uh, you see a, a large collection of uh, very ornate, empty cages. And uh, there is a passage that leads to another part of the house um, that uh, appears to be largely intact. Hmm. Do we need to do a perception a check? Yeah, scene. Scene. I'll do a scene check on where we're at. Yeah. Uh, fif oh, 15. Oh, 15 six and, six, and six stun points. You have these two exits, this one area that sort of leads down to where all these cages are, uh, and then this other, uh, this other uh, passageway that leads down to what appears to be another part of the house, the past a door, uh, that is actually, like you can see, it's, it's fully intact. How big are these cages? Are they like bird cages or are they like lion cages? They are shaped to be sort of like bird cages. They are, in fact, roughly the size of lion cages. Giant we're gonna, bird. Cages. We're going to be fighting bird lions <laughs> soon. <laughs> That's a griffin. Um, <laughs> a bird lion is technically a griffin. All your lore and research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I know. I know we saw birds outside. I don't know if the birds escaped and now are just living out right. in the forest. But those are pretty big cages. Although sometimes people build big cages for yeah, small birds. Yeah, maybe there were multiple birds um, in each cage. I, yeah, I would say let's go down to where that passage is and, and try that door. What do you think? Cool. Sure. Yeah. Or do we wait for a Runcible? Can you fix Runcible? I could fix Runcible or I could kill him. I'm don't not kill. sure yet. <gasps> Evan, don't um, kill him. I don't believe that Runcible is bad at the moment. I will not destroy Runcible unless it seems necessary. Thank you. So let's withhold judgment on the cute robot teddy bear for now <laughs> and, uh, and uh, go down that passageway. I wonder if we need to. the passageway it. or to the cages? 
Oh, do you want to That's in the same the area, isn't it? Oh, is it not? No, it's not. No, there's those a, two, those there's are two separate. The cages are sort of down beneath you a little bit, and oh. then whatever this other structure is is off to one side. <sighs> You like side quests, don't you? You're a completionist. I, I am a yeah. side quest cages. kind of person. All right, right. you can head down there and and, and explore. All right, I search the cages. All right, go ahead. I look for colorful feathers. Okay. Who who twenty? No 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 nineteen. Jeez. With a four point stunt. Let's oh. stop rolling. That's these amazing awful. rolls for non-combat right. things. Right. <laughs> you see that. Many of these giant bird cages have been bent or otherwise torn open. From um, the inside? Mm-hmm. And um, you sort of feel like you are being watched Lion a bit. Bird. But I don't find anything because I'm searching. Right. What you do see are these different plaques that identified what was in every one of these sorts of cages. Can I read the plaques? Yeah, sure. So the language there you can't really see anymore, but there are pictures. So there is a picture that looks remarkably like a griffin. Uh, uh, and there is uh, a picture that looks sort of like an ostrich, but its head is very giraffe-like. Uh, and its legs are made of robotics. Jirosh, a cybernetic Jirostrich. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then there, there is... Jirostratron! Uh, <laughs> yeah, nice. We, that, nice. Paul we, made, that, we, we, Paul, we made that one together. Paul and Storm are gonna have a really good Hang cover on. band. Cover band, right. <laughs> <laughs> Jirostratron, right. So you also see uh, what looks like, sort of like a, uh, like a panther. Oh. Um, with uh, a lot of really beautiful feathers uh, on its shoulders and down its its front legs, and it is breathing fire. <laughs> um, good. That's and good. what you see as you're as you're looking around, so you do find some really beautiful feathers. Sweet. Absolutely gorgeous, sparkling feathers of just about every color, all kind of clumped together and all moving because they are attached to a giant fire-breathing panther. Oh, no. And <laughs> it, um, for a second, it was really pretty. Yeah, yeah I had and, a four-point stunt in there and still. it swipes at oh, you. Geez. Oh, oh man. With a claw. 14? Uh, yeah, I haven't activated my defense yet, so it hits. Okay, and this swipes out, takes you by surprise, uh -huh. and uh, hits you for um, nine points. Whoa. And everyone needs to roll initiative. Oh, gosh. This thing is under cover at the moment, though, so it will get a defense bonus. Oh, man. I know. Okay. It's almost like it was sitting there waiting for you or something. I just, <laughs> I'll just shoot it with the longbow then, I guess. Okay. Uh, 14. Your uh, arrow uh, flies through into this bush thing where you believe this thing is resting, but it does not appear to strike anything. I, I activate my defense, mm -hmm. um, and I call out for restable. Runcible. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. And say, Teddy Huxtable. Uh, <laughs> Runcible, we could use your help. Arkia right. shakes okay. her head at you like you are insane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, Runcible uh, calls back, I don't like to play with the Jakar. Well, now we know what it's called. Play with the Jakar and then come and play with me. We'll play lots of games. <laughs> Forever and ever and ever. ever. At this point, that was kind of a lame turn, you guys. A I'm sorry plume of that. flame emerges from. Oh, I forgot it breathes fire! 11? It doesn't hit me! And uh, this thing of fire comes out, and uh, a lot of the bush around it uh, sort of burns down. Now we can see uh, it. And now you can see it, uh, and you manage to jump out of the way of yes. the fire as it comes nice. toward you. I feel war. I wanted um, it to come out of cover. Ankia. Yeah. Ankia decides to shoot it with a blaster, but first she uses her new assassin skill, mm -hmm. which allows her to mark the Jakar for death. Which means that every damage done is plus one by all of us. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. That is a that is a useful ability. Yeah, yes. Also, hey, uh, really bad Steven Seagal movie. 
<laughs> Mark for death. That's actually how this skill works, is that the creature that has been marked for death is forced to watch, to watch for death. one of Steven Seagal movies <laughs> until... Its uh, health is completely... Its health is completely... I rolled a 14 mm -hmm. with my laser blaster. Mm -hmm. That's going to hit. Yay! Yeah, because it's not in cover anymore. Damage. Dex comparison, four. What? Nope. Oh, it's dexterous, you guys. So I only get to roll one. Two... So eight damage. All right. Wow. Slethk. It's, it's just an animal and we surprised it. Maybe we could just run back upstairs. Why don't but... you do a look to see if you can see the other two that might be there? Oh, that's true. The griffin might be around as well. That's what I mean. It might be trained. Why don't you yell at like six <gasps> Jakar and see if it does it? First thing it did was seven or nine points of damage to you. Well, you know what? I we're, was near we're all we're all in. I'm gonna arcane. Right. I'm gonna arcane blast. <laughs> How did it survive since the chaos wars? These things are old. It's like yeah. it's like eighth generation yeah. Jagar. Maybe it ate the Griffin and the electronic giraffe or whatever. So seven, yeah, four, that's pretty 11, good roll. Plus five, seventeen. Yeah, yeah. sixteen. Oh. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, guess good. what? Yeah. Success. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. Add plus well, one like because of him. Oh, your damage. My damage. Make nice. that arcane blast happen. Oh, right, I didn't add my to. damage. Thank you. Wow, <gasps> uh, 13. <gasps> wow! Wait, did you add? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Sweet. Nice blast, buddy. Thank Great. you. Great. All right, Keeliel. Oh, nice. Okay, um, I guess I'm going to try to shoot this thing with an arrow. Good call. Uh, what's that, 11? Uh, 15. That will hit it. 10! Ooh, that's a powerful weapon you have there. So you yeah. shoot, you shoot an arrow, mm -hmm. and uh, and it hits it, and uh, it roars. Didn't like that. Did you add oh. a, the one plus? Oh, I did not add the plus one. Eleven. Eleven. All right, Lemley. Um, uh, I berserk. Ooh. Nice. All right, go ahead. Oh yeah. gosh. Oh man. I will I should, touch I'll it. I'll just reroll them it. all because. <laughs> oh man. Ooh. Wait, it's not terrible yet. <laughs> yeah. 11? You hit it, but you cannot manage to uh, do anything to it. Dr. Lobotomy did not eject properly. Glancing blow. It's, I'm it, a loser It's all, it's this, all like fluffy with battle, feathers, you and you hit some feathers. Yeah. And right. um, but I'll tell you what, it didn't like that. It did not like that at all. So, oh, all right. thanks for um, absorbing damage for the team. Hey, no problem, guys. Uh, so it is going to uh, leap forward and attempt to bite you. Ooh. All right. <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> well, you know that? 22. Oh, to hit? 22? And? Yeah. And five stun points. Oh! oh. <laughs> Not cool. You might want to take a couple steps back there. So. For the record, it, I wanted to go down the corridor. You did. The door. <laughs> you totally did. It's going to uh, knock you prone and then do a lightning attack. Oh, dang it. Uh, hits you for 11. Okay. And knocks you prone. Okay. And then bites you again <laughs> for 16. What? This thing is bad. But she has armor, right? Yeah, I mean, the armor, armor works. How you doing? I'm fine. I'm really strong. Ankia? Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot this thing. Hopefully. It's almost dead, I hope. Fif <laughs> 15 or 16. She said somehow knowingly. Like, yeah, you hit it. Uh, and then I'm just gonna blast. Blasty, six, nine damage. All right, blast. some of its feathers uh, uh, singe away. Um, Don't singe them all, I want and, some of these And it things. goes, wow! I feel good. <laughs> da, na, 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 na. I knew that. that no. No. Oh. Wait. So it's a sex panther. Because it's the yes, it's a sex. Oh. That's also not that. Wow. Okay. Also not that. Uh, arcane blast again. It seemed to to work. If well you have time. to know, it's the sound that Jaguaro makes from the classic Scooby Doo Where Are You episode Jeepers. It's the Jaguaro. All right. You should have just said sense. that. Yeah. Why did you even try to make the noise? <laughs> because maybe that's how I entertain myself. Okay. <laughs> Uh, arcane Blast. Nice! <laughs> Turn it around, guys. I Check love it. You're like a, you're like a, you're a new, you're a new man. I'm like, I, I do feel, I feel reborn. Yeah. Um, 
22 plus five stun points. So you That's got a super hit. Lethal blow. Yeah, you could totally lethal blow. So I'm going to yeah, start two with dice and the so one from there. So I'm starting with two. <laughs> Twelve. Uh, Wait, no, no, no. 12 plus, uh, plus 2, uh, 14 plus mark for death. 15. Yes. 15 mm -hmm. plus an additional 2d6. So 20. <laughs> 20 with one arcane blast! Wow. Take that, Bear! Oh, nice. How's your that head? Is, that is a great <laughs> hit. This thing is not the dead. The car is not dead yet? It's not dead. Whoa. Um, wow. But it's bleeding a lot. Okay. Nice hit, um, nice hit. Helio. Do I save an arrow and melee this dude? What does more damage? I mean, an arrow does, but only three more. Arrow. Okay. Then I will longbow this mofo. You don't want to get close to that fire. Mm -mm. That's a really good and those claws. You don't. It sucks. Suck believe me. Nice. Uh, ooh, stunt points. Uh, what is that? Nine. Um, Thirteen. So Seventeen. That hits. Nice. All right, on this one. Good. Six, yeah. uh, uh, oh, wait, hold on. Fourteen. So this arrow goes flying down through the air and uh, finds a soft spot up underneath. And, the jugular. And, the jugular and, and, and it hits car. it and coughs a bunch, bunch of blood and viscera out onto you. Sweet. Uh, awesome. And then Thank it you. falls down and twitches twice and is dead. Skabam! <gasps> Good, Good fight, fight, guys. Good car. fight. Oh, that thing. Do you know the name of that, like, cologne that yeah, people wore all the time? Yeah, Dracar. Dracar Noir. Oh, yeah. that's the worst. It smells yeah. like a freshman. Okay. Uh, <laughs> freshman <going>. okay. <laughs> I take a clump of its feathers Me and too. tie them into my hair. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay. I go and say a prayer for it, because I kind of feel so, bad. It was this beautiful cool. thing. It's cool. I was going to do that, too, but... Okay. Kill it. Now you did it, so oh. I'll just, You're saying I'll a just take I'm your feathers for something else. Right. <laughs> okay. It's just You know what you should do? Husk. Okay. You should fletch your bows with these. <gasps> yeah. That's exactly what I do. I you take my remaining bows arrows. and fletch them with the uh, Jakars. Do you have, do you have a skill that'll let you do that? Do we I have, have one awesome point that we, will let me do that. Do have you, can, that you know what? You can take that awesome point. <laughs> and you may you may fletch one arrow with Jakar feathers. Oh, it's got to be a special kill awesome when you point. do that. Yeah. Okay, okay. I was gonna say, do we have three weeks to have you sit down and refletch all of your arrows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you can do that. Um, I, take some, I take some feathers too. I don't okay. know what I want them for, but I want them. Okay, that's fine. That's Who points. among you has the highest perception skills? Me. So as you are plucking feathers, you notice um, semi buried in the underbrush. An amulet, roughly two inches in diameter, and uh, uh, very faintly glowing orange. What is it? No! Wait, wait, what? Oh, oh, wait. oh come on! You sneaky! Oh. You're so proud of yourself! <laughs> <laughs>